Welcome, welcome to Unhinged with the Door Dork, where today we do have a very special guest, Mr. Joey Mayers. Let's jump into the next one. Are you ready? Ready. Oh, <laughs> oh man. Look, don't they have a door transfer right at the bottom of that too? Yeah, the EPT down there. That looks like the Securitron one. The, the Sept? Yeah, the Sept, the C-E-P-T. That retrofits right into the Von Duperin one. Yeah, but it was much easier to just pop a couple holes and put a little loom over it. <laughs> So, I mean, you know, the first thing I noticed was the smoke seal on the door. So more than likely, there's some sort of fire rating on it. So we failed that door since we drilled through it and we have an unrated piece of wire loom running on it. Yeah, that's, that's, that's no ADA, bueno. Yeah, ADA probably wouldn't be real excited about that. Not to mention in the world of door hardware, that won't last long at all. I mean, I've put $5,000 worth of panic hardware on doors and then seen people take a cleaning cart and just peel it right off the doors. <laughs> Use this flimsy little string that looks like kids want to play with it, right? Like, like they already drilled the door. Like, why didn't they just connect the pieces there? Or what's going on? Maybe the failure happened in the power transfer. I don't know. Yeah, I think I would have fixed that, but I don't or, know. Or does this go to a different lock and they've retrofitted with a, a panic bar on this? And that was their way of getting power to the motorized latch retraction or something. Yeah, maybe the bore through the door, the raceway went from that hinge over to like the trim and they just needed it for the MLR. They're like, oh, it's easier if we just run a new one, just run it through. Hey, look, but you know, they put some wire loom on it. They could have just left it bare. <laughs> I mean, and he did a nice job in that frame. It's a small hole. Yeah. yeah. That could have been, been way electric, worse. electrical tape on each end. I mean, you know, we can find some positive here. No, actually, it was a much bigger hole. They just bondoed it off. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. They done that while they were painting over the uh, fire label. Yeah, there you go. Yes. There you go. Yeah, where's the fire label on this? <laughs> oh. Again, I mean, it's probably not the worst thing, honestly, that I've ever seen. But at this point, the fire door is failed if they were to get it inspected. That, that in itself is probably enough to give it a bad score. Yeah, I mean, a failed fire door, it's not doing any good, right? Like, it's better than nothing, obviously, if they took the door off the hinges, but it's like drilling holes into a fire door. You're just compromising the whole door. It's easy for flames and smoke and stuff to get through that. And once it gets through that, then what's the reason of it? Right. Well, you know, too, in this, I mean, somebody done this quick install, maybe it's what they had to work with. Maybe it's all they knew how to do, but in a true fire inspection and they reference NFPA 80 and they do this, they're going to fail this door. And technically this door should be replaced to, to meet fire code. And so that quick install cost them a little bit of money now. I don't know, electrified hardware, a uh, fire rated door, hinges, a new frame. Like what that's obviously we can't see the other door, but if it's in a hotel or a business, it's probably double doors and they probably did the same mm -hmm. thing on maybe there's an that's auto true. door on it, you know. So it, it can add up real fast. Hopefully it's not in a hospital because then you can just double it. Oh man. Yeah. Okay. So officially knocking score. What do you think, Joey? I hate to say a 10, maybe a nine. You know, again, it's going to fail inspection if it's done properly. Got to give the installer a tiny bit of credit. So we'll go with the nine because they did attempt to cover up the wire and, and make it look a little more presentable. You know, again, if somebody's not in this industry, they probably really don't know about fire codes and how they affect doors and whatnot. So we'll give them a nine. That way we give them a little bit of benefit of the doubt in there. Yeah, I'm like in the nine range i mean if we're if we're in a fire this is a 10 probably but in regular operation uh, until somebody pulls on that wire it's probably okay but yeah no this is probably a nine they call it shock door because when you go through it's shocking <laughs> <laughs> It's all low voltage. You'll be fine. That's how you do your test. You just wiggle it. A little art. Yeah, it's still good. We got power on it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I'm with you. Yeah, in a case of a fire, honestly, because it's going into the panic device and it's on the other side of the frame, like it probably would still hold up, but it's not going to pass the test or the code or so. Yeah, we got to give them a knocking score of at least eight or nine. It's not too knocking bad. 
It's more just like, why? Why why would you? Why would you do that when you have power to the door already? I think in this situation too, not knowing more about the door, not that it still doesn't fail, but looking at what we're looking, I mean, if it shut properly and it latched properly, that's probably the bigger thing here other than it still fell in. That's true. Yeah. I wish each one of these pictures, we had a video that complemented it with like someone going through it and closing it. And then, then we could really get some detail out of this. <laughs> okay. Next picture. Final picture. Are you ready? I actually don't even remember. Like my memory is terrible. I don't even remember this one. So it's going to be a surprise for me too. <laughs> It's even better. Oh. oh no. Oh man. But my initial thought is, hey, I made it through all three pictures without seeing something I did. So we got that going. I mean, is there really even a door? Or is it to is the it? right of the picture? It's to the right. Yeah. But like the first oh, glance, yeah. oh, the doors <laughs> underneath the jackets, right? Yeah, like I'm, you're I'm running through them shirts for sure in an emergency <laughs> situation. <laughs> Oh, uh, hot and deals it, and, it, and clearance sales and fires. Like it just made me think about you know you see the exit signs that have the arrow. You know when you get out of the hallway, you're supposed to turn. I'm like that's the last thing I'm going to be looking for. Like I'm going to see the exit sign and I'm dashing through it. But meanwhile, you go through it, you hit a dead end, and you go back and you're like oh there was an arrow saying go to the right. <laughs> yeah, I feel like they need to make those arrows more obvious or something, or change the sign completely so it's a different type of exit sign. It's yeah, or like big flashing lights like blink like pointing that way or <laughs> I can see the frame is like a maroon and I like how they've color coordinated the clothing display to like match with the frame I appreciate yeah, look, that. that jacket just blends in nicely yeah like, and there's that some... like hoodie peeking out behind the other jacket we could easily layer on to this door and add the options to this <laughs> and Benji took the picture so now we know what style clothing he's into I mean me if you're looking for any <laughs> gift ideas there's plenty right here well Joey you may not know, but Ben used to work at Ralph Lauren. So if you need a stylist. Is that why he's popping his collar right now? <laughs> Ever since I can remember, I love it. the merchandiser and store manager inside me is like also like judging their display here. Like that's a lot going on there. I was coming back in top right. So now we're educating the door nerds on style. <laughs> <laughs> Where's Mia's Uggs at? I don't have Uggs. Oh. What? I thought you went to Starbucks and like- I have- Latte and- Excuse me, but I'm in my 30s, so I have sorrels. What is that? Is that like compression <laughs> socks or something? <laughs> I went into the shop with my wife. We were up in Leavenworth, Washington, which is a beautiful Bavarian village up in the mountains. And walking into the store, I immediately pull out my phone and my, my wife's like, yeah, I see it too. Yeah, Good she's she's, like, she's keeping her eye out for it now. So Can we really rate this door since we can't see it? I mean, uh, if... The only person that could exit in the emergency this way is Mr. Kool-Aid Man. It's hard to see, but there is a window. So someone could be confused to think that there is a door here if they like are trying to get through and they're like feeling the glass. And anytime there's a path of egress or an exit, you want it to be very clear and concise because when people are panicking, and they will, that's natural, we'll all panic in these kind of applications. They're going to be just like fumbling all over the place. And if they think there's something there and they're trying to get through, like they won't be able to, even though the doors right there there's smoke or something like but don't forget all of those people are gonna go out the front door because that's the door they came in and only us door nerds are gonna look for the other exits because that's the first thing we did when we walked in we scanned the environment where uh, my sure. wife gets on me all the time she tells friends anytime we go somewhere she's like uh joey has to sit near the exit and he can tell you where they're all at in the event of emergency <laughs> like i hope that I don't have to prove that to be good one day. But when it does, y'all are going to all be coming to me wanting to know where to go. It's going to cross my arms and say, I don't think so. It reminds me of the show Psych, where the dad, I don't know if either of you watched it, but the dad really just trained him to be like observationally aware and be like, you can't have dessert until you can shut your eyes and tell me how many hats are in the restaurant. And it's like that. It's just like situationally aware of what is happening around you. Just training, right? It's just knowledge. Like once you know, you you know that you can't unknow, right? Like you got to. Oh yeah. Yeah. You can't help but look in. I mean, yeah. just think here, if there was an emergency and the power went out, that thing's going to light up that area like a runway. Say, hey, come this way. It was a fairly long store. Like what if the fire started up at the front of the store and like, that's your only way to escape as out that point. And people will be looking for it. I mean, it definitely needs to be fixed. I don't think a lot of people probably notice the importance of things like that signage and location. It just seems 
most people just say, oh, it's, it's an exit sign. It just, you know, but there's a lot more to it for sure. And I don't know, if you were inspecting this, you wouldn't let this slide, right? You would want them to resolve this, right? Get the exit sign over to the other side or have this one be pointed to another exit sign that's above the door. Yeah, I, I mean, you know, the codes, I think sometimes a little different in other areas, but I'm sure there's probably a footage thing you know how far from the door does the sign have to be i don't know if anything directly says it has to be over the front i would assume with it off to the side like that it should have that arrow like we sort of joked about earlier to at least give that indication that that door is to the right and not underneath it i think it could be fixed i think it would be important to note on the fire inspection to have something done like i said maybe it could be as simple as the arrow but if not i see to the left of that they got some surface mounted conduit there so they had to extend off of that a little bit to you know move the sign it would be the end of the world i would also suggest not having the merchandising going all the way up to the ceiling let's that, bring it down so that if there is an actual emergency there's a differentiation in where the clothing ends but you yeah, guys okay. have those baggy flannels now you can... <laughs> did you say flammable or flannel <laughs> yes <laughs> Both, right? Like, I hope those are all fire resistant clothing, right? Like, hopefully those are all polyester or something. I don't know. You know, the fire code says you can't have too many uh, flammable coverings on the wall. That could be something that's over as well. Yeah, that's something to consider there. That potentially is degrading the quality of the actual wall itself, right? Right. Because the wall is supposed to be fire protected as well. (laughs) Exactly. I've seen cases where schools you know, had to remove some of the artwork and stuff that was on the walls because the fire load had been increased too much for the wall size to go with the fire rating. So it could be the same issue here. I'm not sure. I've seen that a lot where they like run construction paper all the way down the hall and like there's just a plethora of art projects and paper mache, like whatever is on there. It's like that in a fire, that's just going to all light up. It's a good time to remind teachers Teachers, do not decorate your doors. It interferes with the door's fire rating. That's Put right. the decorations so, on the wall. Then little Johnny's painting home. Don't hang it on the door. Let him yeah. hang it on the refrigerator. And retail managers, don't do this. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Officially, knocking score. What do you guys think? I'm going to go seven. I haven't used seven today. And again, I think it's definitely a big deal, but easy remedy. Can't see too much of the door, so we don't know about that. But as far as a path of egress, at least it's clear. It doesn't look like anything's in front of the door. So. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, there's the step stool right here, but I mean, there's still plenty of clearance in the dark. You might not see that and you could trip over it. But if we're being picky, there would be some things here, but I don't even really remember that door. Obviously, there wasn't anything too wrong with it. Otherwise, there would be another picture right next to it. (laughs) It don't matter how much light's in there. If I'm wearing my flip flops, I'm still going to stump my toe on that little ladder no matter what. Or just emergency or not. (laughs) It doesn't matter. (laughs) Your toes will find a way. (laughs) They will. (laughs) Preferably about the pinky toe. So not knowing if the exit sign has a proximity limit, I'm in the six, seven range also. Part of me feels like eight, but some of the clothes need to come off from the top because that sign could even get lost in the clothing alone. Like even if it's within code distance wise, it's too crowded. Uh, Well, like if they packed out the rack, it would be totally lost. Like if all three of those were totally packed out. Especially if you're standing like closer to it because then it's like jutting out and it's like yeah. overflowing a little bit. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe I'm in the seven range. Uh, yeah, this one's a tough one because I don't know if code wise anything is wrong, but it feels wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like 99% sure this is not code compliant. I know there is like a foot wise, but I'm pretty sure it has to be at least on the same like wall Mm. of the exit or at least point in that direction. I'm with you. I don't think it deserves a 10 or even a nine. I'm iffy on maybe an eight or a seven. I'm going with seven. I like your answer. Seven's probably the right answer for this because it's not like it's that bad. It's not like they could eventually still find the exit. It just, you might be running into the close first and then like, Oh, crap. I can't exit out this way. Oh, there's a door right here. I'll go out this way. I mean, it's kind of like what my wife always tells me. You you can do better. You can do a little better. (laughs) Try a little harder. Incremental improvements. That's right. (laughs) Thank you. Thank you, Joey, so much for your insight, your knowledge. You're knocking and you're slamming. Appreciate you jumping on here. And thank you for joining the show. Yeah, no, thank you. Appreciate it. For those that are watching, make sure you join us for the next episode. Our doors are always open, partially because they are unhinged. If 
you want to be featured on a future episode of Unhinged, you can leave a note below or you can email me at mia at doorhardwarenerds.com. Thanks for watching.